So for the third faction, we have here Therians. The Therians. I don't know that. I don't know what what that. 8043. <laughs> they oh, look 80 like 8043 Therians. Yeah. The Turnus Continuum. So this is the clandestine gang criminal or cult like appearance. Oh. You want them to do so. You can already imagine they are like stealth. They are uh, ignore terrain, and they have they're they're a tricksy sort of uh, faction. So like uh, like Eldar, like Eldar, like Eldar, but not really the movement. Well, maybe some movement because they can go through through terrain. Mm -hmm. But like for example, this uh, unique uh, weaver that they have he increases your hand size. Mm -hmm. uh, he can he can return cards to your hand, which is uh, something that you can do. So if you have a blast, you want to throw around, you cycle it back, throw it, cycle it back, and so it, so it can do that. Uh, so in addition to the book, uh, for the, first part, have the, uh, the grafter, and uh, this is to squads. To what the no, this is private air press. Cricks the cricks. So what he does is he, he, he brings back uh, guys to the squad. So if you have an understrength squad, he can bring it back. And he has a plus two armor aura, which is good all around. Which, which plus two armor. Oh, wow. Yeah. Even though he's not oh. armored himself. <laughs> Even though oh, yeah. I, I don't know, I, I I have to check the stats on this one on, on what he does. But he looks I can imagine that you keep him behind like a building and he just yeah. hits you to all that that aura. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's their heavy war jack. This is the one that I'm saying that the torso cool. is uh, that it, looks really nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh this is also I believe the only war jack with built-in flight. Ooh. And the thing about this game, if if you have flight, you're harder to melee. So it's you have a base plus two power dice, red dice for your defense if someone tries to melee you in, in flight. So that's one feature that this jack has. So for the faction, they have access to stealth tech. Both squads and jacks can be mm. given stealth. So you can't shoot them if you're uh, outside eight inches. Although there are cards and tech from other faction that tend to to negate also stealth, but you know that's part of the game. And, and stealth, stealth works like stealth in War Machine. War Machine, War Machine yeah. You can't be shot if you're if you're you're far. Uh, mm -hmm. the squads have the spike ability; they can move through walls. So if you have heavy terrain, uh, getting objectives may not be too hard for them. They are a toolbox faction, meaning uh, you may not use all your models because. Like for example, their heavy support squad. What they do is they when they shoot at something, they remove a buff. So if you place a, a card on them that increases their armor by two, you use that squad to shoot them to to remove that buff. But if your if your opponent is not uh, a buffing kind of player, then then you you have a squad there whose ability you're not really using. So it, it tends to be like that. You have a, a toolbox sort of faction. Uh, their light jack is the only light jack with four weapons. All the others have three. Their light jack has a built-in crab claw. And uh, every time you put arc on the jack, its strength is increased by one. So you can put three arc, and it now becomes the POW 7 claw. Mm -hmm. And what really made me enjoy that is I, I had this cipher that uh, when you play it, the jack sweeps its melee weapon around and hits everything within reach. And it's a reach to uh, claw. Like so, in War Machine. Yeah, so they, they, they do have that. Uh, <laughs> Hashtag triggered. <laughs> yeah. So uh, their heavy jack has flight. And they have the access to the three weapons. Okay. There you go, Jay. Your, so, your faction. <laughs> oh, it's tricks. It's tricks. Stealth. Uh, yeah. Stealth and corrosion. Yeah. So it's tricks. Corrosion. And I, I, I forgot what corrosion does in War Machine, but here it reduces your armor. Uh, so I don't one know what damage that. every turn, I think, and then roll. Is, is that it? One damage every turn until it expires. Right. It, it expires. expires. Here, you hit it with corrosion, it instantly gets minus one armor, and then you roll for damage. So it's instantly. Oh, wow. And then in the end of the turn, 
you roll the red dice, I believe. You roll the red dice, and that's how much damage it gets. If you roll a blank, then it's done. Okay. But okay. Maybe the red or the white. I, I may be wrong there. I may have to check that. But you roll a dice to see if it, if it disappears. But, but that's critical, John. People can't decide if they don't know if it's red or white. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll email all of you later. <laughs> I'll let you all know. Because that's a, a, a what? A 50% chance versus a 16.7% chance of failure. Exactly, yes, based on the. Uh, I'll have to double check that. I'm sorry. No, it's too much, too much uh, statistics. Statistics. <laughs> yeah. Weavers are considered the, the strongest in offense. Uh, if they're given an arc, the reach of your damage spells or your ciphers is 18 inches. 18 inch uh, arc node. And they have a spray. They have, a, I don't know if it's 10 or an 8 inch or 10 inch PAL4 spray. And of course, spray here negates cover. And cover here is a big deal with all the terrain. Mm. So they can just, you can just bring them in. You can even not use them too hard. You just push them forward and, and spray whatever you can spray. So spray. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in the whole process, I hope. Okay. Uh, the spray is a spray template. The same. Oh no, straight line. Straight line. Straight line. <laughs> same like that one game. <laughs> like that one game. No, not unlike that one game. Sorry. Unlike that. It's a spray template. This is just a straight line. So you have to draw a straight line. A bit different. Uh, less models are affected, but then again, there are less models in play. Mm. So yeah, I already explained about Raxis. And the uh, solo that comes with the the starter is is strong and sturdy. It's uh three wounds. Uh, armor four. Actually, John, that solo master. is that solo is the one that made me not want to get this faction. Because that guy looks like he's from GI Joe. <laughs> 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 a bit boxy, I agree. <laughs> Looks like Space Hobo. Space <laughs> Hobo. There are actually three sculpts. The two other sculpts are girls. Because the one that we have is the male. Yeah, the, girl, now we're in the start. Now the male. <laughs> there's one with a bikini, and there's one holding beer. And then the beer is. Uh, but, but that's probably Mini Crate or Gen Con X. No, no, no. You, you, you can avail of them. They're, they're yeah, because yeah, because the the drinking thing themed um, uh, models are usually Gen Con. Uh, in this case, I think it, it is out for for retail because even the combat engineer, you can buy a weapon swap where right? instead of that that repair thing, he's holding a coffee mug and he's drinking coffee. So you you can actually buy that 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 part if you want to. Okay. Okay, so uh, they're activation efficient, mm -hmm. uh, meaning they have abilities to remove activation tokens. So there are chances that you can activate a single model multiple times uh, in one pulse round. Uh, Unit-wise, uh, they're upper echelon heavy, meaning their their grunts, their squads are are the, they're the militia. They're easy mm -hmm. to kill. Okay, they're not maybe that good compared to the to the other factions, but their their weavers and their solos uh, and their jacks tend to be very good. So this yeah. is Everblight. <laughs> Everblight. Oh, I know. Maybe so. Oh, okay. uh, without the but base, they have flying. Eh? Tricks without the base, and they're they're coming out with the dog uh, this year, and this is an attachment to the squads, and this sorts of buffs the squad. So it sorts of rounds out. The squad was weak. Uh, they bring this out. This increases the speed of the squad, and it's a, it's a melee, also mm. a melee uh, beast. So See, that's a shredder. Yeah, it's a shredder. shredder. No, no, it's not a shredder. It's, it's the other one. Uh, it's uh, a rake. Lion. The rake. Yeah, the rake. Rake. Yeah, yeah, the rake. Oh, it's no, no, it's a rake. Rake. <laughs> this is, this is raker than the rake. <laughs> this is stronger. Show me, show me. Yeah, it's raker. Yeah, the other one's rake. This is raker, so this is better. Yeah, yeah it, 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 it makes a melee attack. That's what, that's what it does. 
Or do we have to wait for the rakest? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's uh, I don't know. 80 millimeter base. 80 millimeter base. And that's our first impression and discussion on the Eternus Continuum. Join us in the next episode where we talk about the newest faction, the Imperians. <laughs>